Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good today. Just uh, been spending a little bit of time today trying to get the boat cleaned out and organized from this last uh, uh, tournament, Lake Hartwell down there. Just like uh, after every tournament, it seems like the boat needs to be gone through and get some TLC on it. And um, uh, next week I'm gonna give, I'm getting my power poles put in on the uh, Skeeter tomorrow. Uh, they're at Sport Boats USA in Nixa and um, after I get the power poles on, I'm going to give a complete walk around of the boat and give you just a, a real comprehensive breakdown of what I think about it and go through the boat in fine detail. I think you might find that interesting. But hey, today's topic is one that I've thought about for years and years and years, and that is, are great anglers born great or are they educated? And, you know, this has sort of been one of the topics that I've thought about for a long year because a, a lot of years because I've always uh, I've always been somebody that really like analyzes my peer group in fishing as far as you know people that get on streaks or slumps or people that are doing really well or people that are doing really poorly you know just I think it's a really interesting study in, in human behavior and the whole human experience to really see uh, you know how people do in this sport for different reasons but i've always asked myself you know you get you get some of these really high performing anglers out there that, that go through periods of their career where they just seem like they're on a different level i mean there's been you know anglers you know clun back in the 90s you know maybe denny brower a little bit to some extent um then you had you know of course van dam was really dominant you know for for a period of years there and then you've had uh, anglers like Jordan Lee, you've had some Brian Thrift, you've had uh, Aaron Martins, you've had a lot of people that have sort of like had small windows of like extraordinary performance, uh, some of them longer than others. And that begs the question, it's like, when you're talking about performing at a high level and these anglers that are like, you know, really good, or just the anglers that are able to make a living in the sport in general. They don't have to be like, you know, the, the top 1%. There's a lot of anglers out there that, you know, have been in the sport a long time that have uh, not even won tournaments, but they've been consistent. It's like, the question is, is like, are you born a good angler, you know, with the ability to do that? Like some, ang like some people are just gifted athletes in different sports, or is that something that you, you can actually learn and acquire through hard work and knowledge. And I, I wanna give you my opinion on this and I sort of wanna explain why um, I think this. First of all, I think that, um, I think that there's a percentage of both. I think, that, I think that some of the really good anglers, they're simply just born with that ability to break down water and to understand fish and understand fish movement and habitat, you know, uh, you know, the habitats that they use. And it just comes easy to them. Um, what I, I'll, I'll go back to example. One of the, one of the anglers that, you know, I was buddies with early, I still am, I'm, but we've traveled together a lot early on in my career was uh, an angler named Randy Mosley. Um, he still lives up at Lake of the Ozarks and, um, you know, Randy fished a lot of the tournaments that I did Bassmaster starting out. And he was one of those anglers that like, he didn't, he, he didn't put, it, it's like fishing to him was like, he didn't take it too seriously. He, he, he enjoyed it, but it's like, it wasn't like the most important thing in his life. And he was one of those anglers that could go out there and he could find fish on a new lake in no time at all. It's like everywhere we went, he, he would like, he'd, go, he'd have a natural confidence and he'd go out there and he'd just find fish immediately. And, uh, you know, he, and he not, he didn't like overanalyze it. It's just like he had this ability, like some people that hunt a lot, they're just, they just know what they're doing and they, it just comes real naturally. And, you know, he was, he was one angler out there that I remember that had that early on, but a lot of people have never heard about it because, you know, he didn't, he didn't have the, really the desire to take it to the next level and spend a lot of, uh, you know, time, you know, crafting the other aspects of the sport, but just from being a, a natural angler he was he was somebody that uh, he was like one of the first anglers i realized it was just born with that ability to be a good angler and looking back through that a lot of the fishermen that i've seen 
it's just like they've got a touch. It's just like they've got a touch that you can't teach or, the, or they're, you can't instruct. It's like it's something that just, it's, it's just an intuitive part of their being that's beyond explanation. And in my own case, for example, like that, I don't, I don't consider myself somebody that like was like super gifted just off the bat naturally with fishing. I mean, I, I had to work at it, you know, pretty hard you know, to get to the point where, you know, I, I am as a fisherman. It's something that took a lot of hard work for me, but I also had, there was a part of me in my own fishing that like, I had that flow at times that like, it came easy and, and it came natural. And I always found myself at the right place at the right time a lot of times. So it was a combination. So I think what you have in the sport, um, from what I've seen is you've got You've got a segment of anglers that are just naturally gifted and with that natural gift they also have a hard work ethic and they put a lot of time into it and they've got the passion and they've got the desire and they figured out you know how to financially uh to to set themselves up to fish and when you have that combination of naturally gifted angler that has a hard passionate work ethic and have resources they are hard to beat and there's been just been a handful of people out there that have fell into that category, you know, completely like that. Then you have like the next level that I'll talk about. That that's like would be the top level. The next level of angler is you have uh, somebody out there that sort of has uh, a combination of both. It's just like they they may not be like the the most naturally uh, gifted anglers, just like to find bass cold, but they spent a ton of time researching they spend they spend a lot of time to pay attention to the fine details of their tackle they study the sport they research it they talk to a lot of other good anglers they spend a lot of time on the water and the deficit they have in natural ability is made up by just a pure hard work ethic and uh there there's a lot i think that this category that what i just described there is probably makes up the biggest percentage of um uh professionals that do this for a living that have been successful at it it's like they've got a touch of natural ability but they've got a really really hard work ethic and they've got a lot of passion and desire you know behind uh what they love to do in fishing and that that's the meat of it there then you have a segment of the of the population out there and i've seen this guys that they just don't have much natural ability it's like everything they do in fishing it's like it's sort of a struggle for them and they have to really work hard at it and a lot of these guys they spend so much time on the water they spend so much time on tackle and money and studying the sport and they they work harder than anybody out there yet their results do not reflect on that it's like for some reason they when they get out on the water they they wind up in the wrong place at the wrong time or they don't make the right decisions or they their confidence is undermined but um there's more people out there than what you think like this there, there's i'm gonna guess if i if i had to to guess it i think i'd say there's about uh 10 percent of the professional anglers out there that like i said that they've got a they're they're intuitively they're they got natural ability and they have everything else to go with it then i think that you've got probably it, over 50 percent of the field out there maybe 60 that has a little bit of natural ability but they've got a super hard work ethic and a lot of passion and then you've got 25 percent of the field or so out there that just really lack a lot of of natural talent and ability but they've got a a, a passion and a love for the sport that is just unmatched and those are the people that i really really admire and that i really really am and I'm empathetic about them and I feel sorry for them a lot of times because they absolutely love it more than anyone I've ever seen and they work so hard at it and you know they they have they have limited success I mean it's not like they're never successful they're successful at times but their success does not equate to how hard they work at it and the, I sort of for my own fish and I think I sort of fall into that between a little bit i sort of fall into that you know it's a little bit of natural talent but it's mine weighs more on the passion and the love for the sport and just and just working hard 
you know, just a, a big, really hard work ethic to get where I've got. So th th that's the hardest part about it as far as, you know, wanting something so bad and working so hard about it and not being able to achieve it. And to me in, in professional fishing, um, that's looking back at, at my own career and careers at other of other people the, the one of the most sort of like the the cruel realities of the sport that you can't deny is that this is one sport or occupation that the amount of hard work and effort and determination that you put into this sport is not equally rewarded at all it's like i can tell you for a fact if you get into professional fishing, you better accept the fact that your hard work and the time on the water and you putting in more hours than anyone else will not necessarily equal success for you. It just doesn't, that's just not the way it works. And that's one of the most frustrating things about this sport is because most people that have a career and have a successful career, they get that way by by good a good work ethic, uh, hard you know long focus um and it's rewarded for that and it's not in fishing and i'll tell you here's an example i'll tell you uh, how i really found that out the hard way is early on in my career you know the first couple of years you know i had i had some you know decent success made the classic a couple of times won a tournament and then i went a couple of years to a dry spell and at the time, I was rooming a good buddy of mine, Danny Korea, who finished second in the 1986 Classic, Federation champion. Danny and I, best friends, traveled together, roomed together. And uh, he was the same way. He was like, we were both working hard, and the success wasn't being rewarded. So we decided one season, back, this was back in the early 90s, that we were, nobody was going to work harder than we were. We were going to give it our all beyond it more than anyone else. So what we did is every morning of practice in the tournament, we would get up like at three o'clock in the morning and we would drive to the ramp. We would launch our boats and put them in the water at 3.30 or four o'clock in the morning. And we would sit there until daylight. And we figured by getting on the water earlier, we would acclimate ourselves to the environment. We'd, our frame, we'd get our frame of mind right. And we, we would be the first one on the water. And, you know, before anyone else even was out of bed, we were on the water. And the same in the evening. We would not come off the water until the last boat had come off the water. We made that commitment. And we, we put the boat <coughs> on the trailer <coughs> every day, all season long, put it in the water in the dark, and we took it off in the dark. And we, fit, we worked as hard as we possibly could. You know what the result was? Both of us had, like, the worst season either one of us had had. That hard work and practice did not equate to any success in the tournament. And, you know, I saw a lot of these guys, they'd get out there at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they'd, they'd come in at 4 o'clock, and they'd finish in the top 10 of the tournament. So that's one of the cruel realities that, that I've realized in the sport, is that, is that um, you, can't, you can't work yourself into a, being a good angler. There are things you can do to, to expedite that and help that, but I'm of the belief system that there's just an aspect of the sport when you're talking about attaining the top level and being and winning tournaments that that is simply unexplainable and it's something that you're just born with or you're not. It's a natural gift, it's a natural ability. All the other athletes in other sports have the same thing. There's certain athletes that just have the touch and it's the same in bass fishing. One of the things that will expedite it in the sport, like I said, if you, you if you have passion and desire for the sport and a true love for it, that will help you overcome so much. You know, it will it will boost you up and it'll take you past those weaknesses or any lack that you have in natural ability. Another thing that I've noticed a big and I've talked about this before and I'll continue talking about it because it's a huge aspect is a lot of the anglers out there that, that are financially well off, that whether they have, they have some type of a financial safety net through family or whatever, those anglers out there, um, when you l eliminate that financial distraction, that is something else that takes your mind into a different place and it frees you up and you do, you do, more, you do better in tournaments as a result. If you have um, like a, 
if you're squashed financially and you have a lot of pressure financially, I don't care how talented, how much ability you have as an angler, it will affect your fishing and it will affect the performance that you have on the water. So basically what I'm saying here in this sport, the, the road to success in fishing, you can, and you can relate it to just fun fishing or tournament fishing or whatever, it doesn't matter, but, but the road to success in this sport is not fair, it's not easy, it's not just. There's, there's nothing, there, there's no, there's no rule book in it. It's like, it's all over the page. Um, it's, and professional injustices run wild in it. But ultimately what it is, is um, if you get into the sport to make money, you're not in it for the right reason. Because this is not, I mean, there's a handful of people that can make a lot of money in the sport, but this is not a sport that you're gonna come into and get rich off of. This is a sport that you do because you love it. You love the fact there, there's something about catching bass, particularly catching bass in a competitive environment that just lights some people up. It's something that you love, that you have a passion for, and some people have it more than others. And it changes throughout your life. I mean, people have that maybe really strong early on in their career, and then they get families, they get busy with life, and that and that sort of passes by the wayside. So everybody goes through different phases in their life where they are, they're fishing at a real high level, a real top level in the sport. So anyway, it's just a few thoughts. There's, there's a lot, lot else I wanna talk about on this topic because there, there's so many variables to it, but I just sort of wanted to throw, it, throw that out there as far as, uh, you know, are you born a good angler or you're not? And in my opinion, Top level, top anglers, they, they're basically born that way. And there's other things that, that contribute to that, but um, people that are at the top level, you know, they're, they're, they're right there from, you know, from day one. So anyway, like I said, I hope, you got, hope you guys are doing good. What are you doing? I got Elijah you. showed up here. What happened, huh? Elijah did my pink. You did? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Like I said, appreciate y'all subscribing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'd really appreciate that. I and um, like I said, I'll get the poles put on the boat next week. Uh, I mean, tomorrow, I'm going to do a full overview of the boat, of the Skeeter. I love this boat. This is the mo this is the f my most favorite boat I've ever had, and I'm going to explain to you why next week. Um, but anyway, we'll check in later on. See y'all later.